Daddy, you go crazy. DJ UTV, let them know who we got in the building. Rap God and his man, Montana 300, man. FG squad. Montana, what you want, gang? Man, a whole lot of everything, man. Um, you know, making the most out of life, man. You know, making the most of time, I should say. Um, I'm working on a couple of projects right now. Um, working on a joint album with my bro, No Fatigue. Um, right after that, I'm coming out with Guns N' Roses Part 2 with me and, me and my other artist, Tally of 300. And, um, and I'm working on my first book, too, okay. called The Grandchild. So be looking out for all of that. Okay. And I'm going on tour um, July 14th. My first show is uh, in uh, Joliet, so be on, uh, be on the lookout for everything, man. Word, right, that's what's up, man. Well, welcome to DJU TV. Uh, we're definitely blessed to have you here. This interview is brought to you by the Beer Boss. Shout out to them. They're going to be responsible for making sure we take care of our facial hair. Fella, shot with the Beer Boss. You get 20% off when you mention DJU TV. Montana, we got a lot to talk about today, man. The fans, the fans wanted this one. You know let's what I'm get saying? It, let's get it. I wanted it as well. You know, I had actually reached out to your manager about a year ago when I had yeah. checked the DM. You see what I'm saying? Okay, okay. So I'm, I'm glad we, you know, finally here to chop it up. Let's get uh, it. Man. So number one, taking it from the top, the most annoying question to you, I'm right, sure. Right, you feel it. me? Let's get it. Where you from? Right, right, right. I <clears throat> got you. So um, where I'm from? Born in Chicago, Inglewood, um, as a youngin. Um, I met him, my bro right here from Chicago, Don D. My bro right here, uh, No Fatigue from Peoria. Um, Tally from Peoria too, I met them in Peoria. Um, I met Tally in sixth grade, moved to Peoria, met Tally in sixth grade. Went back to Chicago, I'm going to Drake Elementary School from 28th and Calumet. Uh, my project's called the PCs, lived on the ninth floor, uh, apartment 909. Um, shout out everybody from the PC. They tore our building down, all that. We, um, if I didn't move, I would have been going to uh, Dunbar High School. But high school, I was um, going to high school in Peoria. Start hustling there, and I would be back and forth on the highway from Chicago, <coughs> Peoria, because I was hustling pounds of weed and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So I had connections and everything like that in Chicago. So I'd be coming back and forth to Peoria and shit like that. So that's just how I was. Um, you know, I had this vision, I want to get a deal, I want to make it with music and mm -hmm. the image that I had and everything like that in the studio and all that type of shit, that's why, I, that's how I was backing myself, you know what I'm saying? So I always been a, a boss and, you know, just, I ain't had no, no big homie, you know, to call up, nothing. So whether it was beef or a money tip, you know what I'm saying, anything, I was my big, my own big homie, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, I had to make shit happen and shit like that. So, um, and I always handled my business, I always been about my business. I never been a, you know, a, 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 a dick riding mom. Or, or uh, I'm looking, waiting for the next man type nigga, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, and I had no, never had no problem giving another man his props, if that right. make any sense, you know what I'm right. saying? So as I'm trying to make it, 2012 come, Chief Keep blow up. And then I'm hearing people that do know about me, like, man, dude saying 300 too. You, you gonna change your name since he, since he blew up with it? And it's like, well, my 300 stand for the No Surrender, No Retreat. That's what it stands for. If I, I would be retreating, if I'm like, oh, they made it with first with 300, so I'm going to retreat and run to some other shit. You know, no, I'm going to stand on my shit, and when I make it with my shit, they going to know the difference between this Chief Keith 300 and, and my 300. You know, right. so even when I seen them blowing up the uh, Keith and Dirk and Reese, you know, I shit, I saluted them. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So, of course, I heard hate here and there. Oh, you trying to be like them? And it's like, if you listen to my music, my music don't sound like them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then some people hit me up like, man, you sound different, man. You know, lyrical, you, the, the, the smarts, the intelligence, all that shit, it's, it's different. It's like, man, I don't, I don't hang around them. I'm a different age than them. I'm a little bit older than them. Certain things like that. So, um, you know, my, my wave, my run been a lot different. My upcoming, I, I met a lot of people. I connected with them in different states, different places. Um, I read a lot. I always read a lot. So I, um, I always knew a lot. And when I give advice to other artists, I always say, man, read, read, read watch movies, know a lot about a lot. That way there's nowhere you can't go. You can't put me in a room and I don't know how to function with this, with this white man or this black man or this scholar or this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or a, a gangster or a shorty that's 14 trying to like, I, I got something for everybody. I can bring shit to the table, you know? So I've um, always been a leader and not a follower, if that make any sense. Mm -hmm. And um, so with that being said, you know, when you got certain motherfuckers that's not following the way of everybody else, some people look at like, who the fuck you think he is that he could do it this way? Who the fuck you think he is? Is he gonna, you know, go this route instead of this route like the rest of us? You see what I'm saying? So when they try to knock, it's like, damn, what? You know, some motherfuckers you might see watch a video and then it's over with, they say, I can't even hate, bro. It's like, nobody asked you to hate. But some motherfuckers 
minds is wired that way. Like I'm looking, watching. I hope he say some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Or I hope he fucks up and does some, you know, something I can point out. And it's like for some people, the only thing negative that they can say about me is, but I heard that nigga not even from Chicago. Like, like, like he lying, he capping. It's like you probably have heard that. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, because that I done had motherfuckers say shit to me too. Like, um, I'd have been locked up in Peoria before, and I had a dude ask me like, man, you know why a lot of motherfuckers from Peoria be hating on you, right? And I'm like, uh, I'm like, shit. I'm like, why? Just to hear his answer. And he like, you know, because they say you don't, you don't never rep the town. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, but I'm not from Peoria. And he like, I, I know, I know. I'm just saying like, some motherfuckers are just like if you called it your second home. And I'm like, I said, okay, um, I said, at every place in the whole wide world, who you think got the most hate for me? What city you think got the most hate for me? He was like, uh, probably Peoria. I said, so why would you call a place with the most hate for you home? Does that feel like home? He like, oh, I see what you're saying. You know, so it's like, I got my circle and certain people from Peoria that really fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? And there's some people that, from there even, they was looking for a reason not to fuck with me. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, nothing I ever do has ever came from me want looking for something in the future. You see what I'm saying? So if I give you love, if I show you love, or if I give you $100, I did that from the heart. It wasn't no, when my album drop in May, you better right. buy my shit. Right. Or I'm right. gonna remember, nigga, I gave you $100 and my, you didn't even support my shit. Right. You didn't come out to my after party. A lot of people move that way. Mm -hmm. So when you're not moving from the heart, it's like, you're gonna be mad later on when shit don't go the way you planned it. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm always okay with that. You see what I'm saying? And um, it's a lot of I done heard hate on me, rap artists, I done heard say little shit. It's like, dude, you don't know if you met me, I'll probably be the, the best friend or best, give you some of the best advice you could ever have had. You see what I'm saying? And I don't want anything from you just because I see another black man winning that came from the bottom like me. You see what I'm saying? And it's like a lot of people will fuck up that chance or the opportunity to have somebody solid in their corner or to have that solid resource because you want to go with the wave. Oh, y'all hating on them? Okay, I'm going to hate on them too. Right. Opposed to being that one, like, dude. Listen to dude, y'all hating on dude to my way from. Listen to what he's saying. Yeah. He talking about some real shit. He talking about being a father. He talking about black history. You know what I'm saying? He talking about the vaccines and the other shit that they going on. He exposing the industry. He doing, you know what I'm saying? He doing this. He talking about being there for his sons. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Certain shit like that. And it's like, it's some of us, it's like, I ain't gonna be the one to speak up and say that. Mm -hmm. Cause then I gotta worry about my friends all arguing against me. And no, some people just, they would rather uh, be wrong and be accepted than to be right and, f and feel like I'm the only one in the room. You know, yeah. a lot of people don't like being lonely. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, some people appreciate shit later in life when they mature. Like, I got a line, too, where I say that, um, you know, all fish don't get to debate because they missing my lines. Maybe later in life when you mature, you'll get it in time. So it's like, all fish don't get to debate, meaning everybody don't get to, you know, you can ask everybody in the room, who you think the best is? Who you think the best is? Who you think the best is? But if you go to a rap battle, you don't just let anybody judge. They care about who the fuck the judges is. Everybody don't ain't qualified to be the judge at a rap battle. You see what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, you might be missing lines and you like, shit, I, I picked the nigga that I understand the most. Because you don't understand the scholar. You saying that somebody that's not on his level is, the, is better than him. Because you lack understanding. You see what I'm saying? So most people is like, no, nobody really says, man, I'm not really, I ain't really fit to judge that, bro. Because I didn't really understand what dude was saying. And I understand him, so I don't. You know, I would be unfair if I just pick him based off my understanding. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that. So you got to understand, even in a song I got called Unguardable, I say, you know, the smarter you get, it gets lonely. So it's like, I could go dumb my raps all the way down and, and rap on a level that people can touch or do. And then I could also go rap to this level to where, like, that shit is just untouchable. You know, like, motherfuckers ain't doing it. Motherfuckers ain't saying that. You know, and you go watch from the beginning. Even when I dropped Chirac, you go watch the comments and shit like that. A lot of them comments were saying, man, do the problem. Mm -hmm. Do the problem. Why is that? Why am I a problem? This nigga's in somebody's way. You see what I'm saying? This nigga is like, so it's, it's, it's looking like, yeah, they saying it like it's a compliment, but they, but really pay attention to what he's saying. Dude is a problem. Why am I a problem to another black man? You see what I'm saying? I'm not beef with it. I'm not, you don't see me over, I'm over here with the GDs. I'm over here with the BDs. Well, I got to pick one of them. You see what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm, I'm a gangster on my own. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of black boys don't hear that or don't know that. It's like, man, I got to pick. I got to pick. Who said you got to pick? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You know what? You, you, what what's, what's taken away from you by saluting him for his success? You know what I'm saying? I don't know Dirk. I don't know Keith. None of that. I can get right in this interview, look right in the camera. Hey, much love to y'all. And I done heard hate from that area before. You know what I'm saying? From them, they artists, all the type of shit. It's like, you know, and it's like at the end of the day, um, like I say, they my brothers. Sometimes they just don't know it yet. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, um, you gotta, sometimes you gotta get 
a space to grow. Like, they never put my life at risk, my life at danger. You see what I'm saying? So what? I'm, oh, he ain't 300. He ain't really from Chicago. I'm finna go kill you and take your life over there and deny you the chance to grow into a more of a mature man and be there for your family. Like, it's, it's, it's not that serious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if I feel like I got to watch over my back or, you know what I'm saying, I got to duck, it's like, okay, that's a different scenario. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But no, you know, let some people have their comment. You know what I'm saying? Let them breathe and you stay, you know what I'm saying, stay focused and that way you'll be there for your kids and, you know, your team and shit like that. And a lot of them don't know how to stay focused. A lot of us fail to do that as black men. It's like, oh, uh, Lil Reese said, where you from, boy? You better respond and be <laughs> tough. You see what I'm saying? It's like, I, I'll, if I, if, if, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, do I have to do that because the world expects me to do that? Or when I see Reese, we'll prob if he wants to ask me something, he probably will ask me. You see what I'm saying? Opposed to, or if it's really a problem, we'll see when I see Reese. I don't have to put on this show for the world to hop on the internet. You f nigga, you this, blah, 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 blah. I'm really from Did like, you ever respond you to Reese when he asked that? No, no, I never, okay, respond. Okay. I never respond to him. <laughs> because it's like, that wasn't part of my plan. Right, my plan right. on putting out music and shit like that. I'd rather respond to a fan saying I love you. I'd rather tweet and say I love you too. Opposed to, oh, I got to uh, announce what somebody said to me that was negative. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just a fan of just seeing, you know, black, black people win, man. Word. So let me ask you this, though, with, you know, the whole 300 thing. Mm -hmm. um, as an upcoming artist, do you ever feel like that part, like the 300 part itself, might have blackballed you in some yeah, aspects? Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. It's because it's, um, it's strengthened. Like, like, look at Nike. What would Nike be without Michael Jordan? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, imagine Montana 300 if Herb popped out and said, Man, I fuck with Shorty ass. I fuck with dude shit. You see what I'm saying? Now, someone's like, Oh, well, he, you know what I'm saying? He, like, yeah, that would help help me. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Or, if, or if Dirk or Keith was like, No, I, I, his 300 different, but I, I fuck with what dude talking about. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? He ain't talking about no fushi, he ain't talking about no blah, blah, blah. blah. I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that'd be different. But when you, you know, our fans is the majority of the world are followers anyway. So when they see, oh, man, such and such not fucking with him. That's why some people get that pass because it's like, oh, this Juice World, this Bibby artist. It's like, oh, shit, Bibby fuck with him and her. Fuck. It's like, okay, we're going to accept him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if Bibby and her were saying, fuck Juice World, fuck Juice World, how much of Chicago be like, man, fuck with dude? Because mm -hmm. they followers. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And it's the same thing, you know, with um, you got certain people. I didn't have artists uh, in other cities, you know. Reach out, hey man, you know, you know, dude from blah 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 blah. Yeah, my time 300 show, yeah, yeah, we don't fuck him up here in Chicago. Okay, that's all I need to know. So now, this bigger artist don't fuck with me. So it's that shit is important. It should do you know be like But that. like I said, at the end of the day, it's all in my mind, it's always been me against the world. I still got to set out and feed my kids and pay my bills and make sure I take care of shit and take care of my people. So, you know, meeting or doing songs with uh, another Chicago artist is like that was never a, a, a must do on my list. You see what I'm saying? Like, and plus, I only want to fuck with one. Does that genuinely fuck with me? You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. I would rather get on a song because bro fuck with me and I fuck with bro opposed to only reason I got on that fucking song is because our label said we had to do it. Talk you see what shit. I'm saying? Like right, you, right, you right. forced me to fuck with somebody, that's being fake. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is for a lot of people that we hear and listen. Oh, you know such and such got a song with? If you know how such and such really felt about him, you don't really fuck with dude. You know what I'm saying? Labels made that happen. You know right. what I'm saying? They weren't even in the studio together, certain shit like that. So yeah, it's a lot of fake shit going on. Thanks, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I ain't at one point, I thought you was going to change your name to Montana 3000. I For thought real? you was going to throw the zero on it and That's say, right. fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Because I know how the industry can be with certain mm -hmm. stuff like that. And mm -hmm. at that time, they were so big and so hot. But yet, here you were so talented that it couldn't be ignored. You know what I'm saying? Right. Me, as a, as a DJ at the time, mm -hmm. I used to look at your brand like, man, if he would just throw that extra zero on that mm -hmm. motherfucker. Be Montana 3000. Right. That's how I used to, you know right. what I'm saying? Back then, that's how I used to right. look at it, you know? So I always yeah. wanted Joe, you know, I always felt like, man, he ain't gonna change then. After a while, he just never changed. So you mm. stood on, you yeah. stood on your 300. I stand on shit, I, a lot of shit. You know, I, you got certain people that, you know, like I said, you might be in a, one of many that's like, man, he needed to throw a 3000, you know, an extra zero on it. He need to do this, he need to do that. You know, you got some people that, Oh, well, if you stay in Peoria three years, you start saying you're from Peoria. You know what I'm saying? Like, Type shit. So stop saying where I'm from. Now I'll change it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. at what point does it, do you, does where you from change? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I came to Peoria and they was like, hey, man, where you from? I'm from Chicago. Where you from? I'm from Chicago. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, right, Chicago. This dude, we call him Chicago. It's like, okay, they called me Chicago. Even though my name Tony. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, so when I first got Peoria, that's why I was getting called Chicago. So now at what point do I be like, 
I ain't from Chicago. No, I ain't from, you know what I'm saying? Then when I go back to Chicago, everybody from my project, where you from, bro? Right, right, right. I, right. I, I, yeah, where you, yeah. I mean, where you been, bro? I be like, shit, I have been in Peoria. Peoria? <laughs> what the fuck? Is, you know what I'm saying? What right. the fuck is that? Yeah, I'm like, man, it. it's like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm explaining yeah. where I've been to everybody from my projects. And they like, oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. So when I start hearing about, um, when I start getting a little bit older, uh, the people that did hear about Peoria would know about like basketball knowledge. Like, oh, that's what Howard Nathan or uh, Frank Williams or Sean Livingston from. Like, man, I remember I was at a Dunbar game for my, for my brother, Bill. And um, older dude was like, uh, uh, man, he, he hit the wrong school. He's like, man, yo, this, this nigga Bill cold as hell. He's like, man, he's just at the wrong school. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to get him up out of here next year and uh, take him to, uh, he's like, where you taking him to? I said, Peoria Manual. He looked, he said, Peoria? He said, oh, they breed ball players. So it was like, damn, that was my first time from somebody from Chicago knowing what Peoria was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn. So I was surprised that he said that. And um, it was just like, there's a lot of money in Peoria, I'm going to say. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. I, and I got a lot of it. And it was a lot of hustlers and shit there yeah. and shit too. So, um, yeah. But talk to us was. about your, uh, your upbringing. Because when I was doing my research, um, I, I saw that you did grow up, you know, not only hustling, but mm -hmm. like your mom mm -hmm. was using. Am mm -hmm. I correct? Right. Tell us how that was growing up. Um, that was crazy. I got a um, I got a song too called Mama on my Rap God album, and um, it's, it's talking about a lot about that in that situation. But um, yeah, living on uh, in the PC on 28th and Cal, you met. Um, seeing that was different. I, um, the line on my Chirac. I remember way back when we was broke, we was crying mama high as hell. To us, she was a loving mother, but to other mothers, she was clientele. And I remember begging her to stop, and every single night when I told her that, I'm going to get big and buy a bunch of guns and kill every nigga that had sold her crack. It's almost 20 years later now. She finally sober, but that was the shit that I prayed about. I thank God I made it out. Damn, it feels good to go pick up my mama and take her out. Lil Tony got paper now all in my bank account. And it ain't shit to debate about. If you cross me like Jesus, I'll come back with heaters, be outside your crib like we staking out. But that type of shit is like, um, that was just like a glimpse in it for me. But to the world, the people that was watching me, it was like, damn, we didn't really know about this part of his story. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to know more. So over time, certain songs I would dash and put little sprinkles of shit in there. Um, I got a, a song, a video that's going to drop off my Rap God album uh, called Know My Pain. And it's a part in there that I say, uh, I remember growing up, my mom, times that she was sober, she would always say, I'll be writing little raps in my little notepad and shit. She'd be like, you know, you the world's greatest rapper. You know, and I'd be looking like, all right, man, you know. And she'd always say that. And it was like, I didn't even feel like that at the time. But she would say that, and I'm just thinking, like, you my mama, you supposed to say that. You just trying to, you know, give me some motivation like any loving mother would. So I wasn't really taking it serious, but she would always say that for years and years. Even though I'm getting better, she would always say that you the world's greatest rapper. So in that song, I say, before I knew I was the best, my mom was telling me that. Rap God, good with the pen, ooh, wrestling match. I moved my mama out the hood off of blessing these tracks. It hurt my heart when she left and went back. Damn, I just really wish that she knew that she was better than that. There'll come a day when she can't call or she can't message me back. Cherish the moments with your loved ones, always relishing that. Cause time is the only thing in life that we can never get back. And I'm like, when I got on, start making money, that's what I did. I moved my mama out the hood, uh, you know, got her own place. Went crazy, took on a shopping spree, get whatever you want, blah, 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 all this other type of shit. She still didn't get a lot as what she could. She was still trying to be nice. No, I don't need all that. Go ahead, get some more. No, I don't need, you know, ooh, so okay. Nice stuff. Big flat screen TV, you know, all type of shit. Shit for the house, all type of shit. And um, I think she stayed for like a, a month, you know what I'm saying? And she was just like, you know, can I have some company? You know, can I woo woo? And I'm like, no, nah, ain't nobody, you know, from, from Chicago that we was had going on. Nobody is coming here because this shit is in my name. This shit is dedicated to you. And I know what your friends do. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So she was still feeling like, you know, like, damn, I, I damn near feel like a prisoner. I'm like, why? Well, like, are you, I'll come over and visit you. My sons, you know, my daughter, woo woo, family, like, you got us. How the hell you feel like a prisoner, you know? But she, that was really just her excuse, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, after a while, she's like, yeah, I'm, um, you know, I'm finna let me know when you go back to Chicago, blah, 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 blah. I said, such and such, I'm gonna go with you, such and such. So I'm looking like, and then she was like, I'm gonna just go there for like a week, you know what I'm saying? And I'll come back. I'm like, all right. She went back, never came back. So it's like some people, you know, um, that's just their comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? Like they would just, that's where they would rather be. And it's just, it's fucked up because it's like, you don't have to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to 
a lot of kids or boys got these dreams and they mom ain't got no choice but to be there. You don't have to be. Your son made it already and you're there around this shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's what still be f***ing me up to this day. And um, uh, so, yeah, you know, a lot of people don't understand that, too. Like, that's a big goal for a lot of boys, you know, just to move their mom out the hood, whether she using or not. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um, to, to do that and be like, I did that. You know, I did my best or I did my part or I did what I set out to do. You know, I had to learn how to um, accept that and be able to live with that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, opposed to, you know, it's just some people, they just in their ways. You know, that, that's just the way they are. Not that they don't appreciate you, mm -hmm. but, you know, um, that addiction shit is like some shit I can't f***ing relate to. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, when you hear people talk about it or, and this, this is so, this feels so good to them that they could be like, what's the, what the f*** is sex? You know what I'm saying? Like, imagine your kid asking you, Dad, you know, please never have sex again in your life. And it's like, man, what? You know what I'm saying? Like, but imagine something that's so feels so good, you'd be like, I really don't. Me and my girl, we both smoke crack, and we don't really care to have sex no more. Because this shit is so much better than sex to where, like, sex ain't even like, oh, we can also have sex, too. It's like, no, nah, sex is like, it's a little, little, little bit of nothing to me now. Like, that's different. You know what I'm saying? We can't relate to that. You know what I'm saying? So um, I try to be understanding of the process and, and that it's a fight for some people. You know what I'm saying? And things like that. But, um, yeah, I never felt like, you know, my mom didn't love me or, you know what I'm saying? Or if she, like, I know if, if something happened to me, she going she gonna to be, she going to ride way quicker than the, every nigga I know. Okay. I ain't going to say most niggas. I'm going to say every nigga I know. She going to try to blow the f***ing world up type okay. shit. You know what so I'm saying? So she's still here with so us today? Solid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's still here. Yeah. How has her health? Is she still? Up and down. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Up and down. Even when I said, you know, when I made Chirac, you know. Uh, and I say she finally sober, but that was the shit that I prayed about. At that time, she was sober. Mm -hmm. Later on, months later, she fucked up again. Relax. You know what I'm saying? Then, there's been times since then where she was back sober and back mm -hmm. straight. You know, mm -hmm. so it's been up and down. It's, it's a battle. Exactly. It's exactly, definitely exactly. a battle. My father uh, dealt with drug addiction, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, unfortunately, he overdosed, you know, mm -hmm. but it definitely opened my mind up to addiction. See, because some people be mm -hmm. so addicted they can't even help it. You know right, what I mean? Right. So it becomes more than an addiction, but more like a disease. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Um, some people can't go without it. You right. know what I'm saying? And it's some people that when they finally do stop, they die. That's what I'm saying. Like they yeah, damn need so it to, to, exactly, to stay alive exactly, exactly. at this point. So yeah. uh, I be, you know, your mom definitely be in my prayers with that. Appreciate you know? it. Sorry for your loss too, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, but tell us though, when did you start? Like, how did you get? into the music part, you know what I'm saying? How did you start rapping? Who introduced you? You know, how did you become the rap god? Right, well, um, I was really inspired by music just growing up, hearing, um, you know, my dad play music around the house, you know, from Ghetto Boys to I start getting older and I'm hearing, the, you know, Pac and the Biggie and all this other type of stuff, Nah, certain stuff like that, but I, what stood out to me is that he played Tupac more than everybody else. You see what I'm saying? So I seen that the level of respect that Tupac had was higher than the other rappers. So I'm like, oh, okay. You know, you riding in the car, you hear music around the house. It's like, in these times, it's kind of like, as a kid, it's like, this is a good time. Somebody's playing music. You see what I'm saying? You may not know what a man is going through or what your dad has on his mind, but to a kid, this, this feels like things is going right in life. Somebody's playing music. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I seen that, and I seen the, the power that Tupac had from being a rapper. You know what I'm saying? I seen how he kind of like brought us all together as far as this is something that we all enjoy, that we all have in common. No, we Pac enjoy the music. Too. You know? That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> and um, so that was probably like my first biggest inspiration was uh, Tupac. So I'm just looking at it like, damn, maybe if I rap like him, you know, that will, you know, make me successful because in, in you know, the eyes of Black people from the projects, we looking like the only successful people we know is on BET, MTV, The Box, you know what I'm saying? Certain stuff like that. And it's like, well, we can yeah, only dream cool. of that. You see what I'm saying? So having that dream to where like, maybe if I could do this like him, then I could, you know, change the lives of the people around me or we don't got to keep living like this. You see what I'm saying? So as time goes on, you know, Tupac passes, then this new dude comes, kind of give you to remind you of Pac, he bald head, you know, cut, it's like, named DMX, you know what I'm saying? So it's like my dad buying his tapes, you know, and I'm listening to him, I'm studying DMX, pausing it, write this word down, I mean, write this sentence down, unpause it, pause it again, write the next sentence down, like I'm writing lyrics down to remember them so I can rap them, and you know, whenever I want around my friends or at school and mm -hmm. feel cool, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. not knowing that this is molding me one day to actually be a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, I remember doing shit like that. Then as that wave was going on, some niggas that came out that looked like they wearing shit that we can afford. <laughs> The Hot Boys, you know what I'm saying? Cash Money Records. It's like, damn, they shooting videos. In, we in projects too. They shooting videos in the projects because Puff Daddy and DMX, they weren't shooting videos right, in the projects. Right. It's like, they shot another video in the projects. They shot another video in some more projects. It's like, I fuck with these niggas because we could relate to them. You see what I'm saying? They was wearing shit that we can afford. I got Jabos too. They got some Jabos like that. I'm finna go get some Jabos. You know, so all of this is like inspiring me as a rapper. You know what I'm saying? And it's giving me hope because that seems a little bit close to our reach mm-hmm. projects. White tea, he rapping about a white tea. You know what I'm saying? Reebok, you know what I'm saying? Right. Reebok costs, I think, like $65 at the time, mm-hmm. and these niggas is making it cool. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Bandanas, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I gotta get me a bandana. I remember going to the damn beauty supply store, like, I got me the red, I got me the blue, I got the black, I gotta get, they got a purple one up there, I gotta get that more, you know what I'm saying? Just <laughs> not having come. no money really to my name, just, you know, $5, $10 to play with, and it's like, this is what you're doing. Because these are the people that you idolizing, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, so just being a student of rap and hip hop, and you know, I think every black boy, at least from the hood, and sat down at some point in time in his life and tried to write. For sure. And whether he stuck with it or he either didn't, but you just sat down and tried. Let me see how this For shit sure. go, you know what I'm saying? And um, so I'm just one of the people that really just never stopped. And I always felt like before I knew I was the best, I felt like I could be one day, you know what I'm saying? And I remember growing. Um, you know, getting to college and being to the point where I feel like the only motherfucker in the world that can, I, I think, can rap better than me is probably Lil Wayne. And this was like 2007. And I'm like, yeah, I think that's the only motherfucker. So I'm still working. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm a student of hip hop. I'm listening to Wayne. I'm listening to everybody else. You know, certain shit like that. And then I remember getting to the point to where I feel like, okay, maybe like 2009, 10, I'm feeling like, okay, I think me and him about to tie. You know what I'm saying? Then I got to a point to where like 2013, I'm like, there's nobody in the world with me. You know what I'm saying with this shit? And I remember um, people used to say shit about Wayne and I would defend him. They would say shit like, uh, all he do is rap on other people's beats. All he do is rap on other people's beats. And I'm like, if he's rapping on other people's beats, out rapping, then what the f*** make you think he can't out rap them on some, on his own, you know, on some other random ass beat? Like, are y'all listening to what he's saying? Cause y'all, the shit y'all complaining about has nothing to do with how good he is as a rapper. You see right, what I'm saying? Right. It's like people complaining about, man, he using auto tunes. Like, but does that make it not lyrical now? Because you hear auto tune with it? Because mm-hmm. I can say this rap and then get praise and put auto tune on it. Does it mean I lose points now because I'm still way. staying the same shit? You know what I'm saying? So I remember people would say that, or I would hear people try to bash him, like, man, he ain't rapping about nothing. You know what I'm saying? He all he rapping about is, you know, riding skateboards and, you know, fucking bitches, eating pussy, smoking weed, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, he, but he also got shit like, you know, um, you know, the man I miss my dogs, the, you know, the shit about his pops that passed away, certain shit like that, real life shit, the shit with him and Robin Thicke. Mm-hmm. Like, he got some of that too. So I would see them, pe- certain people try to be funny and compare to, like, as an artist, you know, it's like, don't sit, don't try to sit Jay-Z portrait right here and then go bring Lil Wayne cartoon and be like, look, this, be-. it's like, no, if you're going to sit his portrait here, bring my portrait. Don't right. act like I don't got a portrait. You know what I'm saying? Don't come and bring the, when I'm purposely making a cartoon. You see what I'm saying? And it's just some, it's just a preference. It's like one of the beautiful things about being an artist is that you, you should be able to um, express yourself the way you feel. So if you feel like drawing a cartoon today, cool. If you feel like drawing a portrait today, cool. You should have the freedom to do that. You see what I'm saying? And what a lot of record labels do is they take that from artists. They, we don't want you to talk about the sentimental shit to you. We don't want you to talk about your dad and your father. Talk about selling drugs. This is what we think on sale. I want to put this song right here on my album. It's for my dad. He died. It's like, no, nah, we, we, we don't think that's going to sell. Do that song where you're telling the bitches to shake their ass for the money. You see what I'm saying? So now artists is like, damn, I don't got the freedom to express myself. I want people to know me. Mm-hmm. And you just want me to sell. Even if it means me uh, degrading my people. You see what I'm saying? Or, um, or, or following, making these little boys go down the wrong road. You know what I'm saying? When I want to tell them this type of stuff too. You know what I'm saying? You're not letting me. You know what I'm saying? So some people have them problems with their artists. But um, maintaining my independence, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I can do whatever the fuck I want to do whenever I want to do. I can have that balance. I can balance shit out the way that I want. I can pick what songs go on my album. I can pick the order of songs that go on, you know, that's on my album. Certain things like that that a lot of other artists can't do. And um, so uh, growing up and coming along the years, I remember wanting to deal. Then finding out how labels and industry works. 
You know, and it's like, then I changed my mind, like, no, I don't want to deal. You know, like, I'm doing all of this so far on my own, all based off my lyricism, you know. And then the label's been calling ever since, you know what I'm saying? Still sending messages, texts, how can we make this work? What kind of deal do you want? Well, how can we do this? Blah, 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 blah. You know, so, you know, all of that comes and it's like now, like from since like 2014, I've just been my own competition. In, in my mind, I have to either match what I did in the past or outdo that, you know what I'm saying? And... I don't even go full throttle every song. You know, it's songs I let up off the gas, you know, because I like, you know, being versatile and I'm not always talking to the same exact crowd. You know what I'm saying? It's certain times, you know, I kind of um, consider myself like the LeBron James of this shit to where it's like, you know, you got to know when, 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 you, when we need you to go get 10, 15 rebounds. We don't need you to get 10, 15 rebounds every game. We don't need you to drop 50 on the head every game when there's so much other shit you can do. You see what I'm saying? So it's like I don't have to show that I can out-rap anybody every fucking song. You see what I'm saying? I might make a remix and show that, okay, whoever else did a remix, I'm going to have the best or the most lyrical one. You know what I'm saying? So that's fun to do. But certain times I know when I'm going to keep it like this or keep it at this tone because I'm just making a single. You know what I'm saying? I'm just doing this. So this is for the younger crowd or blah, 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 blah. This is for the females. I'm not going to put a whole bunch of sports metaphors in the song about females and they don't know who the f You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This, this uh, running back is. You know what I'm saying? They don't know who the f uh, You know, this, this certain basketball player, this certain football player is. And it's like, so... People got to know how to, you know, when to press on the gas and when, when to let off. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. One thing that I always found interesting about you that's rare for rappers mm -hmm. is the fact that you don't smoke or drink. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us the type of discipline you instill in yourself to stay away from both? Right. So um, my biggest um, uh, <coughs> reason for that is my mom, you okay. know, and her situation. Makes sense. And to me, I looked at this shit like, damn, I'm looking around the projects like everybody in this you know, we all in the projects, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know a personally that's successful, you know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking, like, one thing everybody in this got in common as adults is they either smoke or drink. Even whether it's weed, cigarettes, you know, just you drinking bottles, whatever you do. And I was just thinking, like, we watched these movies growing up, Five Heartbeats, Temptations, other shit like Jackson 5, blah, 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 all this other shit, you know what I'm saying? And it's like the Frankie Lime and all that type of shit, and it's like... What do they all have in common? Everything, you watch the uprise of the story, things going good. That's our favorite part of the movie. Mm -hmm. Then it's this downfall because of the smokes or the drinks. So I'm thinking in my head, maybe if I'm the, one, the only one that don't smoke or drink, maybe I'll be successful. You know, maybe I'll try <laughs> that shit and see where it goes. Maybe I'll, I won't be in the same place as Everybody the else. adults around me when I grow mm -hmm. up. So that was that. Was that. <laughs> um, I always tell myself I'll never sell crack based off of I've seen the effect that it has on families from first hand. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. And it's like just the same way I love my mom. It's another little boy out there that love their mom. So why would I go sell this to her and do that to him and her and whoever the f else loves her? Mm -hmm. So I always promised myself that I would never sell crack, right. you know, or heroin, anything like that. So all I sold was pounds of weed. Right. And um, even when I sold that, it's people that used to be like some of my clientele, like, nigga, how you around all this shit and you don't smoke it? And right. I learned that really from growing up watching Scarface, and that was his downfall. They said, don't get high on your own supply. That was the rule. And he was fucking up that rule. You see what I'm saying? And you just could watch the movie like, damn, if he wasn't high, he probably would have seen this. Damn, if he wasn't high, he would have seen him doing it. He wouldn't have killed, you know what I'm saying? Certain shit like that. So it's like, a lot of people don't know that when they, when they hire off drugs, you're not in your right mind. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. this, this is not your norm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand too, I made a tweet that went viral, you know, and it says, you know, people that smoke, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a weakness. And a lot of people got offended, you know what I'm saying? But that's, that's, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so the thing for me breaking it down is it's not for me to take a jab at you or to say you a weak motherfucker. The thing is, it's just, you know, it's, it's human to be weak. When you see somebody and you say, hey, okay, what's his weaknesses? You know what I'm saying? What's his, what's his vice? You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. We look for that, whether it's sports or anything, you know? And, um... When you say high, I'm getting high off something. Like, what does that mean? You know, when you take a drug, a drug is to strengthen something that's weak. You see what I'm saying? When you take too much of it, it takes you past the, the level of where you needed to be. So now you're high. You see what I'm saying? It brought it up to that level, but past that. So now it's high. You see what I'm saying? So if you, um, you know, oh, shit, my, my, I got pain in my back. It's, it's hurting. I need some painkillers. You know what I'm saying? I could take it. A certain amount, you look on the back of the thing, yeah, take two of these every whatever, eight hours. It's like, okay, cool. You take it, it's like, yeah, my shit stopped hurting. But if I keep popping, keep popping, now I'm high. Now I'm walking around, you see what I'm saying? Feeling a certain type of way that y'all might think is cool. It's like, no, nigga, 
you took too much. You did too much. There's people that's purposely taking a drug to get to that level and then rapping about it or saying it's cool. Oh, it's hiding them. It's like, that's not right, bro. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, why do I keep needing it? Because you keep going back down to that level of feeling weak to where it's like, I feel like I, I need this. You know, people can say, hey, man, I got the sweet tooth. And they would like accept that shit and be like, man, I'm finna go get some candy. I went and racked on candy. I had a sweet tooth. Makes sense to me. Not knowing or not never hearing that sugar is not for us. You know what I'm saying? Sugar is the main thing that makes us age. You know what I'm saying? Dr. Sabi talked about, um, you know how they say be beauty phase? The Bible say beauty phase. Over time, beauty phase. This woman don't look as pretty as she looked when she was 20, 30. Now she's, you know what I'm saying? 50, 60. And it's like smoking, which blackens our, you know, insides, our lips, all that shit. It helps speed up the process of eight, looking older, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, damn, she used to be so pretty. This bitch look like she been smoking cigarettes for 20 years. It don't look like you smoking crack, but you look like you, been, like you look bad. Yeah. And she, did, she never seen herself turning into that. When she go look at her old pictures, like, damn, I look good, I was 20 years old. Yeah, well now you're 40 and look at you. You look smoked out. Your insides are black and your outside is the result that we see of it. You know what I'm saying? She's she been thinking those whole 20 years, talking shit and looking down on the crackhead. You see what I'm saying? It's like, no, this crackhead is actually finna outlive you. And you and you think you better than her because you smoke cigarettes nonstop while she smoked crack nonstop. You know what I'm saying? It's like y'all in the same boat. You know what I'm saying? Both of y'all felt some type of weakness in y'all void was the, I'm finna go to these cigarettes, I'm finna go to this crack, certain shit like that. So that's what I mean. You know, any of us could be, um, you know, human, weak about something. You know, my weakness might be girls. Oh, shit, when I'm around bitches, you know, I, you know it's like, yeah, she can have anything she want. You know, his weakness might be, oh, when I'm around my cousins, I kind of stop giving a f you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the toughest nigga in the room. It's like, dude, you need to control yourself, you know? And some people have those other weaknesses where it's like, man, I don't know why. I just got, I always had a bad lower back. You know, I don't know why. My, my knees be hurting every time I, I play basketball. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you, and you're trying to take something to, to make it stronger. You need to do this to make it stronger. So wherever people are hurt at, you know, that's why a lot of times, you know, from, you can get your heart broke. It's like, damn. It's like, and you start drinking. You see what I'm saying? Because it's like you're trying to strengthen something. You feel weak. You know? Oh, shit. My brother died and I just went into a deep depression and I just started smoking crack. That's what happened to my mom. Her baby brother got killed. He got murdered. You know what I'm saying? My uncle. Um, his name was Herbie Dodd. And um, a lot of people say he looked just like me, but he had green eyes, you know? And he could box real good. And it was like, uh, you know, he got murdered. And my mom, like, that's when she started doing crack, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So a lot of times, like, at those, you get to some place in your life where you feel a certain weakness, and it's like you, you looking to turn to something, you know, that can help me in, in this time, you see what I'm saying? And um, that's human, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that it's weak because, you know, you're human, you ain't supposed to be weak. No, we all have been weak at different times, you see what I'm saying? And, um, you know, even with some women, they might get cheated on, they be so hurt that they go do something against their character. It's like, I'm finna go just... I'm finna go have sex with this dude that been trying to talk to me for the past year because she's hurt right now. The she had sex with him, she like, I still don't feel better. Mm -hmm. And the dude ain't hear from her no more. Like, damn, she gave me the pussy and then I never heard from her again. It's like, because it, was, it really wasn't about you. She was hurt at the time and was looking for something to strengthen her. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of people just don't know the, the psychological shit of, you know, just being human and, and feeling weak. You know, we always try to run, run, run. What can I run to? Where? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm stressing, bro. I, I need something to smoke. Everybody stresses you don't need that everything that we need god put it here already for us you know the goddamn the sun the, the trees so we can breathe fruit on the trees that we can eat people don't know we can fucking eat grass and live you know what i'm saying they don't know this you know what i'm saying the rain to keep coming coming down like we need water all that type of shit everything we need god gave it to us you know it's a saying that says you know uh if god didn't make it don't take it you know and i i really like live by that you know what i'm saying so um, yeah, that's, that's basically it though. So that's why I don't smoke and drink and I just try to stay focused. I, I enjoy it and I like being in my right mind. You never know when you may be in a time where you should have been in your right mind. That's why you're not here no more. You should have been in your right mind. That's why you lost your kids. You know, you should have been in your right mind or that's why your bro is no longer here because you wasn't on point for him. You weren't watching his back like you were supposed to because you were so busy about the bitches and the drinks and the good time and being fly or looking at shorty ass, you couldn't even watch your brother back to, properly. You know what I'm saying? You needed to be in your right mind at that time more than ever. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know that, that we, we get blinded by so much and the, the only um, reason that we stumble in life is because we, we couldn't see. You see what I'm saying? Like if I trip over the steps, I hit my head on the fucking wall coming up the steps. It's like you only stumble, you fall in life because it was something that you missed. It's something that you couldn't see. You know, we end up going to jail and it was like, damn, something told me I'm leave the fucking crib. Yeah, if you, were able to, if you was able to see into the future, you would have sat your ass down and stayed at home. You see what I'm saying? Certain shit like that. And it's like, 
you know, every time we make a mistake or, or every time we, we feel hurt or pain, it's because, you know, we made a mistake. Something, something was made that was, that, that, that was wrong. We burned our hand in the oven, put it in there. You know what I'm saying? You, you didn't see your, your hand was finna touch that. You know what I'm saying? But now you feel the pain. The pain is from a mistake that you made. You know what I'm saying? And um, we are only human. You know what I'm saying? So we have weaknesses. We slip. We fuck up sometimes. Sometimes we can't see every damn thing. You know, sometimes shit be right in our face. And it's like, damn, I, ain't, I didn't even know it was right there. You know, you, people would be with their significant other. And you really don't know who the fuck you laying down in bed with every night. Mm -hmm. But you really think you can go into another room and say some shit. I heard Master P say, hey, show me, show me, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. It's like, it's people that you don't even know your own damn future. You don't know you're going to go to jail for the next 20 years of your life. You know what I'm saying? You don't know, the, you don't know that your, your wife is cheating on you. She just left and went to work. You don't know you're getting cheated on right now. But you're going to tell me you're going to see my friends for the first time and tell me my future. You don't even know your damn future. Do you know you got three more years left to live? It's like people don't know this shit, but they will really judge other people and, and, and talk like that. Oh, yeah, I know where you get it. I know where you headed to. I know you. I might read a book. That person that you judge right now might read a book. You have to do 30 days in jail, sit down and read a book that changed his whole fucking life. Now he get out of jail. He on another mission. Mm -hmm. A whole nother level of where he was at. But you already told him where the fuck he was going to go. And counted him out. You see what I'm saying? So it's just certain shit like that. People be wanting to pass judgment on other people um, and feel okay with it. That's why I think a lot of people run to like Zodiac signs. You know, you could talk to a girl. She's like, what's your sign? She finna prejudge you. You see what I'm saying? Instead of actually getting to know you. Let me take the time to get to know you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's almost like telling a motherfucker, hey, show me your book cover and I can, t and I can you know, I know what this book is about. It's like, no, you should probably open it up and really get to know this book. That's why they say don't judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. But if it was that easy, you know, we'd run with that. Oh, yeah, show me the book, the front of the book and the back of the book. I'm good. I don't need to read it. But that's what it is. So, you know, you, you're you known for jumping on other people's beats and mm -hmm. ripping them up the mm -hmm. way you say you used to hear Lil Wayne do. Mm -hmm. So you would say you, you got that from him? Yes, definitely. Okay. De definitely. Um, and, and with the millions of views, you know what I'm saying, um, all throughout YouTube, you mm -hmm. feel me? Um, what's your perspective on the rap game nowadays? Because we know it's a whole different from where it was right, you know, right, right. several years ago when, you know, you was kind of... Um, I think really now it's kind of messed up because, um, you know, you got new rappers coming all the time, every day, you know, and with um, the youth, it's kind of almost like, you know how they talk about the NBA games, like some players are coming and they're not even focused on the game, they're more worried about the fashion show, mm. you know what I'm saying? Mm. And it's like, I think the majority of the world, I think today really anybody could be made a rapper, like anybody, like I could take this random dude off the street, get him the right clothes, fix his hair into some some look, give him a look that kind of stands out. You see what I'm saying? And I don't even have to get him a dope writer. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that can rap mediocre to this beat, find a good producer, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, shit, we making money. We in business. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like the 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 craft part isn't really um a real like recommendation or you know what I'm saying? A a thing of uh being able to qualify. You know what I'm saying? Like can you get in this cipher? Can you come up with this? Like, show us that your mind is sharp or that you're clever or that you're witty. You know what I'm saying? Or you, where's your creativity at? You know what I'm saying? And it's like almost now, the majority of rappers is like, man, a sixth grader can come along and come up with this catchy shit. You know, uh, no disrespect to Shorty. I think his name is Pump, but just Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. It's like, wow. Like, you know, nobody's like, Fuck, did he ever think of that? You know what I'm saying? Like. You know, and it's just like, it's a, a lot of that. It's a lot of those lyrics being made and said that doesn't require how does he, how did he, you know? Man, you, who you know could think like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, we don't have, really have any of that really more. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, I fuck with heavily J. Cole, okay. you know? Um, and I feel like out of the rappers that's relevant today, nobody's on his level. You right. know, as far as the mainstream industry, you know right. what I'm saying? I feel like he's kind of in the lane of his own. You know, um, I don't even feel like Kendrick is close to him. You know what I'm saying at all? And, um, you know, everybody else that was having people think like that from the, you know, Lil Wayne, you know, of course, Jay-Z kind of is in his own category. I feel like the Jay-Z's or the Eminem's can literally like disappear for five years. Say, hey, I got an album coming out in three minutes, and it's like, it's going to sell basically off your name alone. You know, right. like, the world is going to appreciate whatever the f*** 
you gotta say, even if it's not on the, you know, like I could say some of the illest shit, you know, um, 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 I said something in one of my raps, the Rap God song, and I say, um, you never know when you're looking right in the liar's face. These bitches burning, don't put your wood in that fireplace. And it's like, somebody could, I could say that, and then Jay-Z could say something. Um, one thing that Jay-Z got that's super dope is you can hear his confidence in his rap. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very important. You know what I'm saying? Um, it helps win a crowd, too. He could say something as far as, I could turn 10 into 20. 20 into 40. You should be afraid of what I'm going to do next. And people, oh, my fucking. You know, but if you said that same thing, they gonna, they'll be sitting there like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, show me something. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. so some people, there's, they, they can get away with certain things because they've, their resume is helping them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm fucking Jay-Z. You know, I don't have to have on Gucci. I don't, I'm, I'm Chris Brown. I don't have to have on Louis Vuitton. I could have on some shit that if you walked in here with it, they would say, what are those? But if Chris Brown got it on, it just makes it, I need to catch up. I need to find out Tight what it shit. is. Like, really, what are those? I want some. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying it because I'm trying to diss you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because you Chris Brown. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's going to sell just off of that name. So when you build your name, like, it's some people that hear Montana 300 and they just, oh, dude, we got bars. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where the respect comes in that is just the lyricism. You know what I'm saying? Then you got some people who have this, like Montana 300, or dude be talking, like, he be teaching. Like, he got songs where he's actually teaching and blah, 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 and he's telling some shit that I would want my son to hear. You know what I'm saying? Certain shit like that. Then you got some people that's like, Montana 300, I ain't trying to hear all that teaching shit. I want to hear the Chirac guns and, you know, what, what that nigga, you know what I'm saying? Fuck all the wife and you and for shit for all the bitches. I want to hear... Guns, guns, guns. That's the nigga I want to hear. If he ain't talking about that, get that shit up out of here. And it's like, and you know, you got some women that's like, can you make more songs like Wife and You? Right. Like, we really don't want to hear the guns and the shit. So I got different type of fans, you know, that just like different versions of me and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So I try to, you know, keep all that balance and got some songs for y'all, this crowd, got some songs for this crowd, got some songs for this crowd. And, um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. But yeah, Wayne, being a uh, student of the game, hip hop, he definitely uh, changed the game and made me look at it in a different uh, light. And he gave me a bar to like, man, I got to, this nigga is backed up, backed up, backed with fucking, um, bars. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, most rappers, it's like, if they got bars, it might be like uh, the eighth line. Oh, that was a bar. You know what I'm saying? Uh, six lines later, that was another bar. You know, right. but I never seen the back, the back, the back, the back till Wayne was doing it. Then I heard Santana do it a little bit sometimes, shit like that. But, um... I, um, I, I was intrigued by that, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I need to f find out how to do that. I need to get to the level where I can do that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that was at the time when I felt like he was the only person that was better than me, like in 2007, right. 2008, Wayne, you know? So I'm still, you know, trying to get better, trying to get better. You got some people that rap, and they're working on their craft, but they might look at him and be like, I'll never get on that level. So once you accept that, you'll never get on that level, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know, you know, you make up your mind, you make up your future, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you have to set the bar for yourself. What are you reaching for? You know, I can't reach across the table and pick up this glass on the table unless I put it in my mind first. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing. And you'll never get better than him unless you reach to be better. You know, you have to reach first. Even if I reach out and I miss the glass, does that mean give up? You see what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm going to try and try. But the rest of you motherfuckers gave up on the first try or didn't even try. Because, man, that glass too out of my reach, man. I ain't going to try. It's like, what's stopping you? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just look at shit a lot, a lot differently and shit. So, with that being said, can you tell us who the Montana 300 top five dead or alive is? Um, now, this is a tricky question because it's like my personal favorite, like who I yeah, would rather listen to, favorite. or who I think is like the best. Like a ranking? Yeah, because that's, like that's the different thing. Because, like, for right. instance, my, my favorite basketball player of all time is Allen Iverson. But I don't, I'm not saying, yeah, Allen Iverson better than Jordan, yeah. Allen Iverson better than LeBron. It's like, that's two different things. Mm -hmm. so my personal favorite, or personally who I feel like is the best lyricist. Whichever you want to share. It's your top five. Okay, okay, okay. So look, I'm going to go with who I feel like is the best lyricist. Okay. Right? Um, I'm going to take myself out of this. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put myself yeah, in. Yeah, keep yourself in. I'm going to put myself in it because... I would definitely be being disrespectful to myself knowing all that I put in the game to not put me put me there. So definitely number one, me. Two, I would have to say Wayne. Um, three, I would have to say. Ah, um, oh, shit gets tricky, man. <laughs> um, lyrical wise, uh, a lot of y'all probably want to looking for. Um, 
I'm going to say in the industry. I'm going to just try to stay in the industry. Because okay. I know some battle rappers like Arsenal and, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And some other motherfuckers that's not mainstream. Um, shout out my boy One Take Timmy. You know, that, that really is li like lyrical. You know, like that. And um, so I'm going to just really try to stay as far as the industry. Uh, yeah, definitely Wayne number two. I would have to say, I don't mind giving, uh, I don't mind giving uh, J. Cole number three. Okay. Um, I would have to say next, um, I will, I'll, I'll give Eminem, I think I'll give Eminem number four. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's lyrical. I've heard people, um. Try to say, you know, he's a house, you know, uh, the corny uh, stuff guess. and the blah, blah, blah. They say he a guest in the house of hip hop, right? right? right yeah, I heard he's a guest. Uh, some people say, you know, he's not really talking about no real shit. He's talking about killing his mom and the corny shit. But it's like when it comes down to it, as far as uh, being a lyricist and his, the mechanics of rap and stuff like that, dude is definitely different. And mm -hmm. he raw, you know, he don't, you know, his come up is different from ours. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. we have to be mindful of that. He's talking about his own thoughts, you know what I'm saying, which may be different from the typical black boy that was you know coming up in the hood that was rapping you know what i'm saying so okay um i would give him that four and then um lyrically am five i might have to say um you got yourself uh, uh, wayne eminem j cole i got j cole before eminem eminem before j cole M j cole number three right yourself yeah. Yeah. Wayne, J. Eminem. Cole. No, J. Cole, then okay. Eminem. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, J. Cole, then Eminem. And then, um... Fuck. Mmm. <laughs> a lot of people might get uh, mad at me for yeah, this. That's, that's, that's tough. And I'm going to say this, because I've been, I've been listening to him kind of in a different light lately, and he hasn't always been... He's not consistently super up here lyrical, mm -hmm. but sometimes he's gotten there to me and, and did and showed that he can do that. And I'm not sure if he's writing all this or not, but I'll have to say Kanye West, bro. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, he got some shit, especially the um, early Kanye. You know, he got some shit, man. Like, that, that I feel like went past a lot of people's heads. Like, that's some shit to really sit down and think mm -hmm. about. Like, like wow, like, that's, that, that's some shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, um, so that. Uh, personal, my personal favorite, um, I would have to say, I'm going to keep myself out of this one since I'm listening okay. uh, to other people. Uh, I would have to say Tupac. Word. No, let me go with Lil Wayne. Why? Tupac. Tupac. DMX. X. Um, uh, <coughs> Young Pappy. Mm. And, um, uh, when uh and uh rich homie kwan when he came out i was fucking with him super super heavy wow. yeah i put him at five I, I i feel like he need to be let off the leash man rich homie kwan he, he tough but young pappy mm -hmm. what made you put young pappy um i had a story about him uh um, i think my um my, my manager my, my artist j real he had showed me him okay and i think it was like his finito remix you know and i'm like yeah shorty raw but I'm seeing how much he diss in other gangs, mm. you know? And I'm like, he look like he got a lot going on. You know, negative attention. Mm -hmm. And I ain't trying to bring that around me and my circle. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So um, I'm like, yeah, I, I fuck with Shorty. You know, that, 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 was, that, was, that was tough. Then my manager showed me him too. And I'm like, yeah, you know, Jay Real just showed me. Shorty got a lot of shit going on where it looked like, you know, I don't need that unwanted attention around me type shit. You know what I'm saying? But I, I like him, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was that. So I had to go on the East Coast to knock out like five or six shows in a row. And when I get we get in the car, uh, my manager, KP, he uh, started playing Shout his mixtape. Yeah, he started playing his mixtape. So I hear this song, I'm like, I'm driving, I'm listening, like, yeah, that shit, that shit was nice. Hear another song, hmm, that shit was nice, you know. So now I'm liking him more and more, you know, another song. Liking that shit too, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, hey, Shorty ass, so I'm, now I'm thinking of ways I can make it work. I'm like, man, you know what? When I get back to the city, I'm going um, to reach out to Shorty and I'm going to just sit him down and just really have a talk with him just about mm -hmm. moving forward and how he should conduct himself, what he, what he could change and, you know, to move more professional. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Shit like that. I think he can get over that 
level that he's at right now, like I think Shorty could be big, you know, yeah. especially me and him side by side on the track or doing an album together. I'm like, yeah, this I fuck with Shorty and his energy and shit like that. Like the energy I had on Chirac, shit like that is like I feed off energy too. You know what I'm saying? So I could, I was looking at him too, like I'll be able to feed off his energy a whole lot. He'll turn me up mm -hmm. being on that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, mm -hmm. um, the very next day, we did the first show the first night. The very next day I wake up, it's like 8 o'clock in the morning. I get a text from uh, bro right here. And he texts me like 8 something in the morning like, man, Joe, uh, you know, little Pappy got killed last night. Mm. And I'm like, damn. You know, and I was thinking like, damn, what if I, what if I, just, what if I would have reached out earlier as soon as I was thinking that shit when we got on the road to go to the East Coast? That's like a 13-hour drive or some shit, you know? I'm like, maybe if that would have, you know, shifted his day a little bit in a different way, you know what I'm saying? Maybe when they got killed, so that 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 kind of taught me about waiting to do shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't no other time like now. Like, take care of your business or whatever the fuck you gonna do. Any plans you got? Do that shit now. If it's possible to do it now, do that shit now, man. Cause tomorrow, not promise. You know what I'm saying? And that shit fucked me up. You know, um, not just oh I was gonna fuck with him, but just. I grew a new love for him and appreciate like kind of hearing his story and his raps. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Him so young and shit like that. And um, and then a couple like his manager started talking to my manager KP and he was you know saying certain like man he he f with Montana. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, woo 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 did this and all this other type of shit. I'm like damn. So um, for for a while man, you know I we was me and my whole my whole crew we that's all we was banging. You know what I'm saying? For probably like a couple months just all all pappy shit, finding whatever we can. You heard this song? You heard this song by him? It's like. It's just, it just so, so crazy, man, and fucked up. But I definitely uh, enjoyed, you know, his craft and his music, and I, and I respected it on a whole another level as far as just respecting his mind and the shit yeah, that's coming out of sure. his mouth is a product of the thoughts on his mind. So, yeah, he definitely in my top five as far as my favorites. For sure, R.I.P. Pappy, for sure. Yes, sir. And I know most recently you had a, 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 a run-in with the law. <sighs> that shit happens a lot, man. Yeah. <laughs> You don't you know, seem like a guy that'll be getting in, get in nah, trouble with the law. It ain't even it ain't even shit like that. It's just um, just some certain shit, some old shit that's um, from some little weak ass county I was driving through. You know, one day and they they don't ever have nothing big going on there. Like they don't have no murders and no type of shit. And they shit I got pulled over with no license. This this is shit from 2018. Oh, okay. Still dealing with it. You know what I'm saying? It's like. They act like they got damn it. Oh, should we call Tupac driving through this motherfucker like this? Like they made a whole news article about this shit. Like I got pulled over with driving unsuspended. I got my license back and everything. Y'all still over here doing shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like um, it's just a it's just a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, um, I think I had I just had to do like 90 days in that motherfucker, and um, and that's the most I ever read in that little time for a suspended you know? license. Spent, no, they gave me 300 community service hours. Okay. And they told me they didn't think that I did on, on May 5th, on the day that I had a show. Mm -hmm. I had a show on May 5th, and it says I did hours on May 5th, but my show got rescheduled. So instead of, since my show got rescheduled, I'm like, I'm just going to knock out these hours. So they brought the lady in that I did my hours with to court. And she went up there and to the thing, and she told me, like, yeah, he did this shit. He came in that day. And they was like, you got, um, you got any proof that you was here? I'm like, what the fuck? Me on camera saying May 5th? Because this is all the way in August. This is all the way in September. And we talking about all the way back in May 5th. Right. I'm like, no, I don't got footage of me doing community service hours. on. Oh, just, yeah, it's a red flag for me. I'm going to condemn them to, to, and condemn them to uh, 180 days, which is half of that time. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, wow. But the thing is, uh, that, that same judge, uh, I had a lawsuit going against him mm -hmm. from the first time they locked me up for the shit. You know what I'm saying? And so he was like personal. So I found out afterwards that you're not even supposed to be judging me no more because I got a lawsuit against you. You see what I'm saying? That's a conflict of interest, you know? So it all make, make, made sense. But going in, in there that time, to go knock out them 90 days. Um, uh, my sister and brothers, they sent me a lot of books constantly while I was in there. So I'm getting books you know, every couple of days. And I was reading so much, you know, in there and gaining so much more knowledge and certain things like that. And I was writing a whole lot too, of course, you know, from, you know, just raps and shit for my books and shit like that. Um, to where it was a real um, productive retreat from life, you know, a, a reset. You know, I was finally getting a proper rest, things like that. Uh, eating a lot cleaner and shit like that. Working out four times every day and shit like that. Um, so it wasn't a... Um, I got a line in one of my raps too that I say I, I see setbacks differently. Just lessons that was meant for me. Like this lesson might not have been meant for everybody else, but if you see, you know, yourself or just look at things 
um, the song Mama too, I say, um, you'll see your blessings when you look at how shit could have gone. So a lot of people say things like, you know, hey, what's up, how you been? And they say, you know, could, how could it be better? I always let them know, like, yeah, just know you could be worse. Like, so appreciate this state that you're in, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes God might have a motherfucker go to jail or some shit because this is actually saving your life. You know, something might have happened. You know, you might be dodging something else that was worse out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, on my song called LeBron James, I say something about my mom. Uh, like, I can't lie. Like, I felt like the time she went to jail, I was kind of happy because I knew she was safe and was sober there. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, but, it, but just certain shit like that. So, you know, it's all about how you look at shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. whatever, you, um, whatever you accept mentally, like God creates in reality. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So if I tell myself I'm in jail, oh, I'm a, man, I'm, I'm in a hell hole, then my time in jail is gonna be like hell. But if I say I'm in jail 90 days, it's a cakewalk, walk in the park, that's what it's gonna be, a walk in the park. So yeah. it's like yeah. Yeah. mentally, what, what, whatever you accept, like mentally, like is this this or is this that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Am, am I fucked up or am I gonna be, I'm gonna raise up from this shit. It's like whatever you accept mentally, that's the glory about it is God is going to create this reality for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, a lot of people don't know that that's just the power of the mind, the power of knowing how to think, you know, choosing your thoughts. Sometimes we get negative thoughts, you know, negative thoughts. Like, you don't have to accept that. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, damn, man, this that is f***ed up. Damn, this f***ed up too. And I think about it, it's like, yeah, but are, are you going to sit back and accept it or are you or are you finna fight against it? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and it's, and it's just that. You know, you make up your mind, make up your future. Well, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Talk to us about your uh, rap group, FGE. Mm -hmm. What's FGE stand for? It stands for uh, Fly Guy Entertainment. Okay. And um, that's basically my label. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, me, uh, No Fatigue, Don D, Tally of 300, um, J Real, and then I got an R&B artist too named Jalen Sanders. Okay. And that's all that's on the roster right now. Yeah. Okay. So no Savage? No, no Savage. No. Okay. Uh, who is he? That's somebody the fans asked about. Um, Savage, he used to be with us. Um, he's from Peoria. Uh, okay. He came a little bit right before uh, No Fatigue. Um, he's on a computer song with me. Okay. And a couple of our early ciphers and stuff like that. But yeah, we parted ways. Uh, okay. I guess he's doing his own thing right now. Yeah. Okay, bet. And um, battle rap, is that something that you... Uh... I would love to battle rap. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, me, me and Ars, we supposed to be setting up some tune too. Uh, battle rap one day, so I just been on standby waiting on him and shit like that. Even from the first day I met him, you know, he was just telling me like, man, bro, if you battle rap, you know, I, I'll be in trouble if you battle rap, you know, so just to even get that nod and shit from him. Right. And, um, and just me battle rapping, it'll be a whole different Montana that y'all ever seen from me recording in the studio. Mm -hmm. Like my my uh, my mission is would be different, you know. Right. Everything now is just to completely disrespect you. Everything now is to completely humiliate you. You know what I'm saying? Y'all never seen me get personal with a right here, and it's like, no, all of these bars or this minute, two, three, four minutes of me rapping is all to destroy you and you know bring you down to this. It's like I I'll be in rare form. Yeah. yeah. So on the, so on a scale of one to ten, how interested are you in battle rap? Um. I would say maybe like a six or seven. Really? Yeah, yeah, it ain't nothing like, um, cause if I just really wanted to go you after it, I could do it. that. Right, I could right, do that. Right, right. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I always felt like um, I would do it at some point in time in my career. Okay. I kind of just look at it like now. It's like, imagine if LeBron James got in a dunk contest. You know what I'm saying? Like, this would probably be the most watched dunk contest ever. You know what I'm saying? But he's already a respected fucking player. You know what I'm saying? But it's like y'all know how he bombs. Y'all know mm -hmm. how he can dunk, still get his head to the rim, year twenty, shit like that. And it's like. This this would be that for me, like you know, like yeah, this is I'm I'm finna show y'all another uh, uh, me doing something y'all y'all haven't seen me do or participate in. You know what I'm saying? You got any uh, favorite battle rappers you'd like to um, mention? Arsenal. Um, uh, I remember Hell Rail. I with him a whole lot. Um, then was like my favorite two. Um, who else? I feel like it's another motherfucker. I fuck with Surf a lot too. Free Surf. Yeah. Uh, uh, me and him got a song too. You gotta look it up. I did a song on one of his uh, projects right. before. I think it was like 2016. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely um, Arsenal and uh, and um, Hell Real. I f oh, and 40 Cal. I just fuck with 40 a whole lot too. Right. A lot of people sleep on him. But you know, Hell Real and 40 Cal, them was some of the earlier battle rappers. But today they still got shit that's like so big of a bomb. You know what I'm saying? That it's like, man, they, that, that, that was crazy. Um, 
But Another dude that's I just want to uh, just mention him, just honorable mentions. That's dope as hell. I don't know if he ever battle rapped or not, but I think he would be dope. But just as a rapper, knowing how to rap and and, and get your shit tight and crisp, who was raw as hell to me is um, Jr. Writer. Okay. That used dip to be set. Dip set. Yeah, yeah. Dude, ass was nice. Uh, super underrated, super underappreciated. So if you're watching, salute, bro. You know. Yeah. Uh, shout out yeah. Jr. Writer. Yes, sir. That's what's up, man. Uh, but for the for the young men that's watching this video, mm -hmm. they, they 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 listen to the rap god. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They a fan of DJ UTV. What's some advice you can give to them? Um, the two words is probably the most advice I can give. I'm getting these, these two words, and um, I got two sets of two words. Um, and this is like I, I hope y'all don't forget this. Two words. The first two words is be good. And what I mean, like, really think about that and, uh, like, dissect it. Break those two words down. Be good. Like, be of good. Whatever good is to you, be that. You know, whether it's you playing something or, you, you, you know, you interacting over here. You know, you, you talking to kids. You know what I'm saying? You, you're trying to be a good boyfriend, whatever. You're trying to be a good son. You're trying to be a good ball player, a good rapper. Um, you know, you're around your company. You know, when we tell our kids, you know, all right, I'm dropping you off to your friend house. Be good. Be good, be of good, don't get in trouble, you know, protect yourself, you know, uh, protect the people around you, watch your surroundings, all of that, you know what I'm saying, whatever, whatever is good in your mind, stick to that. You know how you see certain kids, hey, we finna go to this party, blah, 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 such and such, 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 it's gonna be cracking, and you get that athlete, that one athlete that tell his friends, nah, bro, I'm good, but I'm good on that. It's okay to be good on that, because sometimes where the crowd goes, isn't where the success is. You see what I'm saying? The success is usually that route, that lonely route that, yeah, they went to the party, I went over this way. They went to the party, I went to the gym. They went to the party and I'm like, man, I can't get caught in the middle of that shit, man. I'm, you know, all the possibilities that might happen there, I might fuck around throw in my future. I'm the top kid in the state or top, top kid in the city and things like that. So I'm gonna choose to be good on that. Be good, man. Um, and the other two set of words, man, is um, just stay focused. You know, it's easy to lose focus. And a lot of us um, have, as black men, you know, we've, we've tripped and lost focus. You know, um, sometimes we do all the work, all the work, all is good, being good, being good, being good. And we make that one bad mistake, you know what I'm saying, or lose focus, whether it's a female or somebody that just, just disrespected us or anything like that. And um, while we on this topic, I wanna say, um, I wanna speak on somebody that, uh, that I love and that I'm real close with, and um, who's going through something right now, and it's uh, Mikey Williams. Um, I know a lot of y'all probably heard about his situation. Um, the young basketball player? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, great, great athlete. Top kid, he's number one um, in his class in the country. Um, he spoke highly of uh, possibly going to an HBCU while we was in the middle of you know, the NBA lockdown and COVID. Then somehow after he made that statement, Somehow he drops down to number three, even though ain't no basketball being played. So it's like that happens. Then they study dropping him down in rankings and stuff like that. Um, even though he's great, he's killing and kills some of the top kids and things like that. And um, you know, you just watch certain stuff happen. You watch a kid grow uh, haters over time. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. And that's even in the basketball world, from the rankings to you know just social media, the other basketball players, and I'm pretty sure. It's hate coming from other areas that I don't even know of, you know. Right. But definitely a um, good kid, solid dude. Uh, it's an unfortunate situation for him to be going through. Um, I already reached out to him and told him, you know, he knows that I'm here and I, and I back him and I love him and I support him still, you know, no matter what. But um, a lot of boys can learn, you know, from his lesson and things like that. But uh, shout out my boy Mikey, man. And for the viewers, you know, that's, that's unfamiliar with Michael Williams. That's a young man that was, um, you know, involved in a, in, a, in a shooting, and um, he's a highly ranked basketball prospect. Even Lil Reese had, you know, showed us some love via mm -hmm. um, social media, you know. So uh, we definitely rocking with him over here, he, and he and our prayers, you know, keep your head up. We gonna make the situation man. together. Uh, but man, rap God, it's, it's, it's definitely been a blessing talking to you today. Guns N' Roses album part two on the way. Um, my book is on the way called The Grandchild. Me and the Fatigue album on the way. We have a title for that for you soon. Um, a lot of merchandise on the way. 
Uh, we got exclusive merchandise that's only going to be sold on tour. So for y'all that's coming out to uh, the tour and, and starting in July, um, y'all could get that. Um, uh, what else would I say? Um, other than that, my bro Don D, he's going to be on the Rap God album with me and Tally. We got heat coming. He got more heat coming. Um, uh, we're working on a group project, too. So we got No Surrender, No Retreat that's out right now. Um, we'll probably bring it back and call it No Surrender, No Retreat Part 2. Um, I haven't really decided yet, but we're definitely working on a group album. Uh, that's my first time announcing that. Um, other than that, um, yeah, that's what it is, man. Um, Rap God, FG shit, all of that. Appreciate everybody that's, um, been, t that's been tuned in, everybody that's been rocking with me over the years. Um, shout out to um, all the fans that have been supporting us with the merch, whoever bought an album, uh, a poster, some merchandise, any of that, man, is greatly appreciated. Um, appreciate y'all rocking with me on this independent journey. Uh, without y'all, you know, I couldn't do none of this, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of y'all definitely give me my motivation and um, keep me grounded and things like that. And um, I got a lot of stuff I'm going to flood y'all with uh, between now and me going on tour. So be ready for it, man. That's it. Love y'all. Well, there y'all have it, man. Y'all heard from the rap guy himself, Montana 300. <laughs>